um, about having advice for current uh, Dal accounting majors. And right now um, we are in between third and fourth year. So we will um, be having a new batch of uh, third years coming in, doing cost accounting, doing intermediate financial accounting one. Um, Tammy, what advice would you have for current Dal accounting majors, either in their third or fourth year, or perhaps aspiring Dal accounting majors? I think I started to talk about it a little bit earlier. And, and for me, uh, it's, it's making sure that what you do from here on out, that you're doing the best at and that you're thinking carefully about how you conduct yourself because, you know, you're going to see all of us. Halifax is a small community. There could be fellow students that might be your employer someday. You never know. So I just think that it's important to always be positive, to be professional, to be thinking ahead about how your actions now could affect you later. And, you know, I think there's something we put in, in our various course outlines that says something like, we understand if you need to prioritize something else and you miss a class, that's okay. That's life. I mean, hey, if I don't get to something now, I have to do it later or I have to figure it out. That's all fine. But that becomes something that you have to figure out. It doesn't then become someone else's issue. So just being more aware of how your actions today could impact the perception that others have of you and, and making sure that you are acting as a pre-professional. That is pre-professional. Yeah. Um, Laura, same question to you. What advice would you have for current or aspiring Dow accounting majors? I agree with what Tammy said completely. Um, as a, a specific example of that, uh, I regularly receive emails to questions that are very clearly answered in the course outline or technical questions that that are very explicitly stated in the notes that I gave them. I love student questions, but th there should be a little bit of effort to find the answer or or you know be responsible for the content and what we're sharing with you before everything is just immediately email Laura and that carries forward right when when they're in the workplace I really hope that we graduate students who read the partner's email in detail before rushing with a question or doing something that contradicts that I saw a funny story that kind of relates to what we're talking about a locker and the fifty dollars right yes yeah. <laughs> where in, the, in the course outline and i think it said it was oh. only a three-page course outline which isn't it's way shorter than ours yeah. so in a three-page course outline the prof said first student to this locker here's the combination there's a treat for them and it was a fifty dollar bill and at the end of the term the fifty dollar <laughs> bill was unclaimed <laughs> i know oh. of a prophet dow who um, she has a, a song that she wrote called Check the Course Outline and she plays the guitar. And anyway, whenever a student emails with a question where the answer is explicitly stated in the course outline, she sends them the link to that YouTube uh, video of her singing with her guitar. And I think that's such a, a light and easy way of reminding them, right? That it's right there for you. Yeah. Um, as a follow-up to that, um, we were fortunate, uh, I believe Tammy, you mentioned a few uh, at the beginning of this, that uh, we recently had CP Marks. So we have a whole bunch of you know, new CPAs out there. Uh, Laura, as a follow-up to your advice to uh, counting majors, what piece of advice would you have to these recently designated CPAs? My my advice goes back to what we were speaking about earlier about how and one of you made the point that it's not always a linear path right life is a is a winding road in a lot of cases which is what i tell our our dow students you're not necessarily always going to take the next step whether it's in your professional life or your personal life it's not all going to go exactly as planned or at exactly the same pace. And I think it's important to be able to still enjoy your life or be content with where you are, right? Rather than always like, well, ugh, I want that promotion. Things will be fine once I'm promoted or things will be fine 
once I'm married or like you, you have to enjoy your life where it is, which can be a hard thing to do, right? I've definitely been guilty of thinking, oh, I, I wish things were like this. Or when I was in my 20s, absolutely. I wish I was in a career that I liked or that I could figure this out. Um, yeah. Thank you, bring up a good point. Oh, I'll be happy when I buy this purse. I'll be happy when I get this car. I'll be happy when I get this role. I'll be happy when I do this, this, this. It's like, no, 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 be happy now right? Um, surround yourselves with good people and have goals. And that's something I know that I still challenge myself with is being both grateful and ambitious. Um, and I, I feel like it is, it, it is possible, right? To be both grateful and happy and to both have things that you're working towards and um, knowing that it, it's okay to have the pull and it's okay to be completely, um, to have different types of goals. Um, but the major thing is if you feel like you'll be happy when X, Y, and Z happens, chances are from my personal experience, and it sounds like from what you've seen or observed or perhaps felt that there's no, I'll be happy when it's, I'll be happy if I can acknowledge where I'm at now and then work towards, or perhaps just acknowledge where I'm at now. Would that be fair, Laura? I think so. How about you, uh, Tammy? What advice uh, would you receive? Would you give to the recently designated CPAs? So, I think uh, I think something that I would say is be memorable in a good way, and and that sort of echoes on to some of the other things that I was saying. But a different example. So, you know, something I I tell my kids is when you start a class in university, make sure that the prof knows who you are. Not mm -hmm. in a stock up way, but just in a, hey, my name is Tammy and, you know, I just want you to know who I am, that sort of thing. That sort of thing is what led me into teaching. I mean, along with a, a series of other being at the right place at the right time, like Laura said, and being lucky. But the harder you work, the luckier you are. Joan Conrad said that in her convocation speech a couple of years ago or something similar to that. And the idea is, is, you know, people need to know who you are in order to remember you to reach out in the first place. So, you know, just as an example, if, if, a, if a few people apply for a TA job and one of them is someone that has made a point of talking to me in class and being that good student or whatever, uh, then I'm going to look more favorably upon them. Or I've had students accuse me of favoritism before. We all do. And I know it was Joan who said something like, yeah, it's kind of ironic. The students I like the most are the ones that work hard and come to class and show up <laughs> in the role. Like, yeah, of course, I'm going to like those students better. So it doesn't mean I'm going to give them a better mark, but it means that I'm going to have a positive attitude about them. So just be memorable in a good way. Go out of your way to come prepared to shake a hand, well, maybe not in these days, but, you know, bump an elbow, <laughs> <laughs> to introduce yourself, to volunteer, to get outside of your comfort zone, things like that. Yeah, the little things really can be the big things. Um, this semester, I was in a classroom where sometimes overflow uh, chairs would be needed. And I asked the students at the beginning, like, hey, if you come use an overflow chair um, before you leave, would you mind putting it back? Um, and, you know, often, like, every single day without without um, without missing one, um, there was these two students that would stay after um, and, um, and put the extra chairs away. Maybe they saw that one of their students, one of the fellow students had to move off. Um, but they stayed behind and they made it like their mission to ensure that I, in addition to some other closed down things, um, that there weren't these random chairs about. And those little things, um, like I, I notice and I'm grateful for that. And I try my best to acknowledge it. So, you know, they stood out and it's not about, you know, these grand gestures, but it's like these, these little things that do, do make a big impact. We've had, so I did survey this.